What's up, Taiwan? I'm Erica Liu with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan's Coast Guard is stepping up its monitoring of Chinese ships operating around the Taiwan Strait. Rick Glatt reports. A Chinese fishing vessel spotted trespassing by the Taiwanese Coast Guard. China's fishing season has just reopened, and tens of thousands of boats like this are heading out of Chinese harbors and coming near Taiwan's islands just across the strait. Beijing claims all of it, the waters and Taiwan, as part of its territory and has been upping threats to take the island nation by force. Along with the massive fishing fleet, China sent three government boats across the median line, an unofficial but sensitive demarcation of boundaries. Taiwan warns that such actions are part of grey zone warfare tactics used by China, also known as the PRC, to put pressure on the self ruled island nation to accept its claims of sovereignty without resorting to full military conflict. Now, uh, the Taiwan side will have to respond by showing that they do have jurisdiction, but do so in a way that also shows that they are not escalating because the PRC side, I think, will be quite ready to take any Taiwan action and to show that it is provocative and dangerous and escalatory. So far, Taiwan has shown it is unafraid to go head to head with Chinese Coast Guard, now even sharing videos of the confrontations. China Coast Guard, 14608. This is ROC Taiwan patrol vessel, PP3520 calling. Adjust your course and leave our restricted waters immediately. Taiwan's Coast Guard has increased its patrols and says it will be resolutely enforcing the law to protect Taiwan's rights at sea. It's a balancing act of standing one's ground without provoking an already belligerent neighbor. There's been animosity across the strait for decades, but in recent months, the focus has been the waters, where incidents between the two sides have at times become deadly. With the fishing season reopened and more Chinese fishing ships coming near Taiwan, the chance of a misstep is increasing, and with that, the prospect of sparking a greater conflict. Alex Chen, Joseph Wu, and Rick Lowett in New Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's Coast Guard says time is running out as they scramble to find three people lost at sea. They're searching for Chinese fishers whose boat sank in waters off Taiwan's Jingmen Islands on Saturday. The Coast Guard has retrieved four of the boat's crew, but the other three remain missing. It says it's now nearing the end of the crucial 72-hour window to find survivors. The Taiwan People's Party is fending off questions about its expenses during its leader Ko Wenzhou's presidential campaign. The party says it incorrectly reported hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars in expenses, but all the mistakes can be explained. Chris Gorn reports. Officials from the Taiwan People's Party, or TPP, are fighting back against a corruption scandal that has engulfed the party and damaged its popularity. The scandal stems from the presidential campaign of the party's candidate and leader Ko Wenzhou. The campaign itself now admits that more than half a million U.S. dollars in expenses were improperly reported. Ka and others say they were not aware of the questionable expenses and are blaming them on an outside accountant, who has been questioned by police and released on bail. Former head of the campaign, Vivian Huang, restated that the campaign can prove its innocence and that all expenses can be fully accounted for. She also apologized for the mistakes made by the campaign and its accountants. Now, a lingering question is whether or not the public is going to accept the story that the party is offering. And the allegations have already had a major impact on the popularity of the party and on Ka himself, a man once seen to be one of the top contenders for the presidency. Now, many analysts have also said that if Ka is seen by the public to be culpable for these crimes, it's very unlikely that the party will survive without him. So whatever the outcome of this investigation, it seems clear that the party is going to have not just a legal crisis on its hands, but a political one as well. Luffy Lee and Chris Gorin for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's offshore wind power project is facing major delays, with 9 out of 10 wind farms falling behind schedule. 
Despite an investment of over 28 billion U.S. dollars, only one of Taiwan's 10 offshore wind power sites has met its target. Officials say this is due to an inability to manufacture parts for these plants domestically. The Energy Administration says it will reduce development costs and encourage domestic investment to combat these issues. Taiwan is also facing pressure from the EU, which says its wind power lo localization violates WTO rules. An infestation of coral-eating starfish is threatening the reefs on Taiwan's outlying Pradas Island. Tens of thousands of crown of thorns starfish have destroyed 90 percent of coral in some areas. The government has recruited volunteers to manually remove them in operations throughout the year. Scientists say warming ocean temperatures may have caused the starfish's spread. Thousands of people in northern Taiwan celebrated a fiery ghost month tradition. It's one of Jilong's most awe-inspiring rituals, but its origins are steeped in a bloody war. Tiffany Wong tells us more. A whole city coming together to mark 170 years since the end of a deadly conflict. People in Jilong in northern Taiwan are remembering those who died in a battle between groups of settlers to the coastal city. Although peace has long been restored to the area, the 15 local clans involved in the conflict still look back on their history each year in a special ceremony during the Ghost Month. Many Jilong natives say they grew up attending the event, but the vibrant celebrations have attracted attention from far outside the city's borders. Thousands of people from all over Taiwan have gathered to celebrate the northern port city's most well-known tradition, and the festivities have kicked off with floats from each clan, as well as performances from local dance groups and musical acts. But the day's main event is still yet to come. The parade ends at the Ba Dozi Harbor, where the clans first place offerings at each altar. This year, the Zhang Liaojian clan is in charge of the festivities, and they've made a huge altar depicting their ancestral home. But the beautiful lantern won't be here for long. It'll go up in flames and be sent off into the harbor, another special way the city celebrates this tradition. Ghost Month is celebrated around the country to honor the dead, but Jilong's traditions are unique to the area. According to tradition, lanterns that sail farther reach more souls. And with each passing year, the clans hope that the bad blood between them remains a distant memory as they continue this tradition for decades to come. Kama Shri and Tiffany Wong in Jilong for Taiwan Plus. Hung Chun on Taiwan's southern tip has celebrated the Ghost Festival with a traditional climbing race that dates back over a century. Teams clamber up an obstacle course greased with cow fat, trying to be the first to capture flags at the top. The winning team gets a prize that this year came to more than 32,000 U.S. dollars. Last year's race was canceled due to a typhoon. But this year's event went smoothly despite heavy rain. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, check out this colorful Belgian regatta with more than 200 participants rowing floating bathtubs. I'm Erica Liu. Take care and see you next time. For more stories from Taiwan and around the world, follow Taiwan Plus News on social media.